Guys, come on. You're really going to fight? <sighs> These friggin' superheroes, man. They're so immature. Captain America Civil War is once again directed by the Russo brothers, as was Winter Soldier, and stars a ton of people. There's no point in naming them. Almost all of the Avengers are here present, and everyone's seen this movie already. Hell, my grandpa saw this movie, and he doesn't even watch movies. This movie is a story of how our heroes turn on each other, as you probably know, because of events in the past. Despite their efforts to evacuate citizens, people died, and people are upset, and it's time to put these heroes in check. And because of certain laws that they're trying to pass, this turns our heroes against each other. Sometimes when I see movies like this, I like to remind myself that when I grew up, in fact, when I was a teenager, for goodness sakes, I never imagined a movie like this would ever exist. And it's so easy to forget in today's world where we have so many different comic book movies that there was a time where a movie like this was unheard of. Winter Soldier took the Captain America character in a far more serious direction. It was almost like a 1970s spy film. There was a lot of grit to that movie. And there was a lot of realism to it. And a lot of people called it the best Marvel movie to date. Civil War does something very similar. It takes far more characters than Winter Soldier did and it brings them down to earth. Yes, there's amazing choreography and fight scenes and chase scenes and great stunt work, but at the core of this movie, it's a film about friendship and vengeance and how when those two things come together, you can have a lot of problems. And it's a far more mature exploration of that along with your typical Marvel comedy and humor that you would come to expect at this point. But I was again surprised by how serious this film actually was. It really took its time to set up its conflicts. It presents a real grounded world where there are dire consequences for mistakes and for these larger than life superhero explosions where an island falls down and murders a whole bunch of people there's gonna be consequences. Angry people are gonna rise out of that rubble, and this movie depicts that very well. It shows the political consequences of such things as well as the very human and intimate consequences of those actions. And that was very pleasing to see. Along with this mature exploration of some of these deeper themes involving friendship and revenge, the movie is also just a ton of fun. The action sequences in this movie, now I, there's things you can complain about in this film. There's things you can get angry about. There's one thing that no one can say anything bad about, and that's the stunt team in this film. They did some of the best stunt work I've seen in an action movie, because a lot of this is very noticeably in camera, and that's very impressive. There's a lot of incredible jaw-dropping stunts in this film, and the stunt team is to be praised, because everything looks very realistic. There's a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, a lot of running chase scenes. There is, of course, CGI and big explosions and really awesome moments like that, but so much of it felt in camera, similar to the way Winter Soldier handled its action, and the Russo brothers being back to direct said action is a great thing to see because while I liked the action a lot in Winter Soldier, I think they improved upon it here. And not just because there's more people like Black Panther, but because it's more well handled. Let's talk about Black Panther. Chadwick Boseman, man, oh, you're a badass. I loved Black Panther in this film. He was extremely entertaining. They take what time they can to give you a reason to get behind him and to understand him because I didn't know much about Black Panther at all going in. But after having seen this film, I am totally behind this guy and I can't wait for his solo film. Chadwick Boseman knocked it out of the park. Spider-Man. This was the one that I was really nervous about, okay? Because when I was a kid growing up, Batman was my favorite superhero, then Superman, then Spider-Man. Spider-Man was always my favorite Marvel hero, and I've been waiting for him to be good in a Marvel movie for quite some time. <sighs> In my humble opinion, this is the best incarnation of the webhead since Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. I adored him. Tom Holland, you are the best. Good job. The writing for him was so on point. He was a poor kid. He could barely afford anything. He had a computer from like 1989 or something, and he was a dumpster diver. How great was that? And when Tony Stark finds him, no spoilers of course, his suit, it's shit. Like, it's horrible. He can't even afford to make a good suit. They understood the most important aspects of what makes Peter Parker entertaining and lovable. And they nailed it. They absolutely nailed it. Spider-Man is amazing in this film. I can't wait to see Homecoming. Finally, finally, after 12 years now, I've seen a good incarnation of Spider-Man on the big screen. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you. And again, with no spoilers, the central conflict that is on display, not just the physical conflict between Iron Man and Captain America, the mental conflict, you understand where they're coming from. Everyone in this movie, including the main villain, you really understand why they're doing what they're doing. They're not just like, I am a movie character and I'm in a movie and you understand why they feel the way they do. Some of these people feel hurt. Some of them feel betrayed. My favorite comic book film of all time is still The Dark Knight. And one of the reasons that film was so good is because everyone's motivations very clear, including the Joker. You understand where he's coming from. He's not just a big movie character. And all the characters in this film, no matter what side they're on, whether they're a hero or a villain, they all have very clear reasons for being present on screen. And that is good writing. There isn't like a clear side where you're like, I side with you, I side with you. I mean, of course there's this whole Team Cap and Team Stark thing, but I honestly just think that's promotional. When you actually watch the movie, it's like, you know, I understand where everyone's coming from here. And it makes it a very interesting moral dilemma, which is why when they start kicking ass, it rocks, because you care about why they're there. And without spoiling anything, of course, I'm just gonna say, Ant-Man. Nailed it. Nailed it. Guys, in the end, Cap 3 is everything I wanted it to be. Captain America is the only Marvel series we've had so far that I feel each installment has actually improved upon the last one because Iron Man 2 sucked. Iron Man 3 was fine, but it was too strange to be better than one. Avengers 2 wasn't as good as Avengers. And Thor 2 and Thor are sort of interchangeable to me. This series, the Captain America series, each one has built upon the last, gotten better and better, and this film is my favorite comic book movie I've seen since The Dark Knight. I'm going to give Captain America Civil War an A+. I know what this looks like considering the last A+, and so far the only A+, I've given this year, has been to another comic book movie. I look like the biggest comic book fan of all time. I'm not. I just love good movies. I can't really say I've read too many comics in my life. This movie is well made, guys. They put a lot of money and a lot of effort behind this, and it paid off. It was great. Go see it. Have fun. It's a great film. Enjoy it. So guys, I have heard your requests. I understand that you would like more hilariosities and retro rewinds. I am finally starting to be able to talk for longer periods of time without my teeth hurting with my new braces. So this weekend, I'm going to do my best to restart my Hilariosity series. I can't say it's going to be every week because there's a lot of new releases coming out soon. But this weekend, since I've just praised Captain America a lot, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to shit on his head. <laughs> because there's a 1990 adaptation of Captain America. And man, it's a piece of shit. We're gonna talk about that this weekend, and I'm looking forward to that, guys. And I am still gonna review The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I've been doing one every month. May is gonna be the month in which I review The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There's just been so many new releases. There was like four last weekend. This month, I am definitely reviewing Amazing Spider-Man 2 to complete that and give you my updated thoughts on that film. Also, a buddy of mine in Hollywood who is a masterful colorist for film, he knows so much about color correction. He's actually taught me quite a bit, and I'm still learning a lot. He wrote a very, very, very cool comic called Bizarre New World. This is something he was very passionate about. It's a passion project for him. He took a lot of time to write this during a writer's strike, and he still was able to successfully pay everyone involved who helped him. And one of the reasons I'm mentioning it is not just because he's a friend of mine and I feel that it's been overlooked. I think it's extremely well written and the art is amazing. If you wanna to go to the link in the description below to check out his work, I do think you'll like it, especially if you're comic fans. I think it's very underrated, very overlooked, no one ever talks about it, and he put a lot of effort and money into it and I do think it's gone under a lot of people's radars. If you have some free time, check out his comic. I do think it's worth your time. And Skipper, keep writing and keep drawing because you are so amazing at it. And thank you, if you're watching this, for all the help you've given me in color correction. You're the best. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.